Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to perform Oracle 12C to 19C upgrade and this time we will cover how to do it manually. The, the steps are the we need to install Oracle 19C home, then we need to recompile the invalid objects in Oracle 12C, we need to gather the dictionary stats and then we need to purge the recycle bin. Once that is done, we need to take the backup. For backup, configure the FRA if you have not already configured it. Convert the database to archive log if your database is not running in archive log already. Take full database backup and then create a guaranteed flashback restore point. Once all of this is done, we are now ready to do the pre-upgrade JAR script. So there will be a pre-upgrade JAR script. It's a Java utility. Run that particular pre-upgrade JAR script. What it does is like it creates a pre-upgrade and post-upgrade fix-up script. And it actually tells us, it actually checks whether the database is ready for the upgrade. And if it is ready for the upgrade, if there are any things that, that we need to consider before upgrading and after upgrading. Once we have done the pre-upgrade char, now it's time to do the, we, we need to shut down the listener, then we need to shut down the database, then we need to copy the files from Oracle 12C to Oracle 19C home. What are these particular files? These are the init files, password file, listener.aura file, sql.net aura file. So all of these files will be copying from Oracle 12C to 19C home. Once all of that is done, we will start the database in upgrade mode from Oracle 19C home. That, that is very important. We need to start the database in upgrade mode from Oracle 19C home. Then we will be upgrading the database. And there are two options. Either we can use the Perl utility or the DB upgrade utility. The, it's your choice, literally. I mean, like you can do any which ways that you want. Once all of the, that is done, we, you can go ahead and modify the etc aura tab file now etc aura tab should point to the new or 19c home upgrade the time zone run the post upgrade fix up script these are the scripts that were generated by the pre upgrade jar file verify the dba registry drop flashback restore point change compatible parameter to 19 and then finally recompile invalid objects gather stats start the oracle 19c listener and check remote connectivity so these are the high level steps of what we need to do the <coughs> sorry the most important part is the pre-upgrade jar and you need to take care of your any pre-upgrade suggestions you need to run them as part of pre-upgrade fix up and also remember that do not pro proceed without taking a backup you need to make sure that there is a full rman backup you need to make sure that you have a backup and also create a guaranteed flashback restore point. Now that we have understood all of these points, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and start the environment. So what we need to do is, as I mentioned, these are the these are the softwares that I have used. I have used VirtualBox 7.6, Rail 7.8. Sorry, it's 7.8, not 7.7. .7 and the oracle 19.3 and i'm upgrading from oracle 12.2.1 i'll show you all of that the first step as i mentioned is installing the oracle 19c so to install the oracle 19c download the oracle 19c for linux accept unzip it on the target server create the necessary directories such as oracle home oracle base install the pre pre-install the oracle database pre-install package and then run the run installer as oracle user to install the database home let's get on to this so i'm i'm connected to this particular box and what i'm going to do is i'm going to i have a database here so aura env so the database name is test and if i connect to this particular database let me let me connect to this this is the 12.2.01 so if i show you select version from v dollar instance you should be able to see so that is you can see that it is 12.2.0.1 this particular machine just have oracle 12c installed it does not have 
Oracle 19C installed. So we are going to install the Oracle 19C on this particular machine. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to create some directories for the Oracle. So I'll be installing the Oracle in this particular. I'll not be using the, the OPT product, etc. You can install wherever you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these two directories. So that's done. This is the directory for Oracle base. This is the directory for Oracle home. So now that we have we have created the directory, let's go ahead and unzip the Oracle software into this location. So I have already downloaded the software. So let me go to that particular location. And <clears throat> so I have now I have downloaded the particular software in this particular location. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip that particular look software. So Oracle 19C release 3 uh, Linux 64 into this particular location. This is going to be the Oracle home. This is the directory that we just created as an Oracle home. So we are going to directly extract this particular software, unzip it into the location, which is going to be your Oracle home for 19C. Now, remember one thing is like, you know, if you have the patches, if you have the Oracle support account, go ahead and apply the patches. I'm not going to do that but it is always a better idea to apply the latest patches which are available. Otherwise you have to apply the patches at a later point in time after upgrade. So it's better to apply the patches before. Now the unzip, once the unzip is done, let's go to that particular directory. And here you will find the utility run installer. So use this particular utility to install your your oracle 19c so i'm launching the run installer for 19c and what we are going to do is it gives us two options create and configure or set up a software only we are going to say set up a software only so click on next single instance yes if you are doing the upgrade in rack you should choose the rack if you are doing the upgrade in the single instance go for single instance because this particular database i'm upgrading is single instance so i chose single instance enterprise edition yes go for enterprise edition Play, specify where you are going to specify the oracle base so that's the oracle base location and the specify the permissions i'm not, i'm not going to use the o install i i am using the dba group but if you want you can use the oracle o install it's your choice i'm i'm not using the o install i'm using the dba group so this is fine now if you want to run the the configuration skips automatically you can run them or you can you know it's your choice click on next is going to verify if all the prerequisites are met which looks like have met and i'm going to click on install the install is going to take some time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the video and come back once the installation is completed so installation is almost complete. It is prompting us to run this particular script as a root asset. So I'm copied that. Let me launch one more putty session. So I'm going to do the root. If you have the root account, you can say sudo su root and you are logged in as a root and you can run this particular script. So that's done. We have executed the script. I'm going to close this particular session and I'm going to say, okay and the registration of oracle database was successful so we have successfully installed the oracle 19c home that's all good now the oracle software is installed the next part is the pre-upgrade so what we need to do is we need to recompile invalid objects then we will check whether there are any invalid objects and then we will use the util rp which is in the oracle home rdbms admin location so this particular package will rebuild recompile all the invalid we will also gather the stats the dictionary stats and fixed object stats so we will gather this particular stack stats and we will also purge the recycle bin the dba recycle bin so we will we can do all of this together or we can do one by one so what i'll do is like i will not waste your time my time so I'm going to, I'll not check what, whether there are any invalid objects. I'm going to just do all of this together. So I'll run this, take this, take this. I'm going to take all of these commands together and I'm going to connect to the database. So what we need to do is we need to connect to our database. So CD or, or ENV, the test, which is the database that we are going to upgrade. Connect as SQL plus as sysdba 
and three things I'm going to do rebuild. So I'm going to re recompile the packages. Then I'm going to take the gather the stats. So this is the second step. I'm going to gather the dictionary stats and fixed object stats. And the third thing that I'm going to do is purge the recycle bin. So this is these are the three things. So rebuild the recompile the objects, gather the stats and purge the recycle bin. So once all of that is done, now, if if our database is not in the recovery, if if the FRA is not configured, then go ahead and configure the FRA because what we need is we need to we need to take the flashback. Uh, we need to take the flashback uh, guaranteed restore point. We need to take the restore point, uh, the flashback guaranteed restore point, which needs FRA. So we will be configuring the FRA and you, you, we will also convert our database to archive log because the flashback we, to perform the flashback uh, to take the recovery point guaranteed restore point we need the database in archive log so we will be converting the database to archive log and we will take the rman full backup and once that is done we will be creating the guaranteed flashback restore point so let's do that so before doing that let's this is all good so let me let me clear the screen and let me show you that this particular database is not in the this particular database is in no archive mode. So this particular database, as you can see, is in the no archive mode, which means if I try to take, if I try to take, a, uh, if I try to take a restore point, the guaranteed restore point, let's see whether I try and you can see it will not work. So we need to, we need to enable the FRA and we need to, we need to enable the FRA. So to enable the FRA, set these two particular parameters, the recovery de file dest and the the size of the fra and the location the destination for your fra so where you are going to store the fra so set these two particular parameters convert the database into archive log so start up we have to start up the database in mount mode alter database archive log archive log list will verify that our database is now into the into the archive mode and then we will be altering the uh, we will be opening the database we will take the rman full backup once all of this is done we will be taking the full backup so we'll say backup database plus archive log and we'll verify that the backup is present let's <coughs> let's go ahead so before doing that we will we need to create a directory for fra so let's run all of these three commands together so i've done that done that that's all good so fra is set so now if i show parameter recovery so if i do this then you can see the file dest is set the size is set that's all good but our database is still in no archive mode so you can see archive log list is no archive mode that is another way you can verify this you can see select log mode select log mode from v dollar database and you can see the log mode is no archive log so to convert the database in archive log, you will say shut immediate, start up the database in mount mode, alter database archive log, verify that it is in archive log and you will open the database. So let's, let me take all of these commands and hit enter. So it is, it's going to shut the database, it's going to start up the database in mount mode, it's going to alter the database in archive log and it's going to, it's going to, uh, so, uh, and then it's going to verify that it is in archive log mode and then it's going to open the database. So these are the steps that it, this particular command. So we are converting our database from no archive log to archive log mode. So that's is currently, and you can see archive mode is enabled and the archive destination is the FRA. So FRA is set to the this one. And if I run the same command again, select log mode from video database, it was, it was showing uh, it has a no archive log mode. Now, if I run that, it is archive log mode, which is same as here so uh, we have converted our database into archive log mode now let's go ahead and take an rman backup to take the rman backup set the oracle environmental variable that's done and then connect to your database using rman target and then you will say backup database plus archive log so you you can take the level zero backup you can take the you can take so it's we i'm saying Take the backup the full backup along with the archive log backup so that's done make sure that you also take the control file auto backup if the control file is 
is is auto backup is not set you take the backup of the control file as well if auto backup is there then you don't have to take the separate control file backup so now let me exit clear connect and verify that there is a backup using list backup so i'm going to show you that i have got the full backup here you can see i got the full backup and i also have the control file backup so all of that is present in the everything seems to be good so we have got the backup done so now once the backup is completed it's time to take the it's time to uh it's time to create a flashback point the to uh before creating the flashback point we will verify if there is one so let me run set some parameters so that's done let me clear the screen and verify if we have any restore point so the v dollar restore point will tell you if there is and no row selected so i do not have any restore point on my screen so i'm going to create a restore point i'm going to create a restore point pre upgrade restore point that's done and i'm going to now verify if i have a restore point and you can see i have a restore point pre upgrade 19c guarantee yes and it has been taken at on today which is the time of recording so that's all good so we have successfully done the, the we have successfully so we have taken we have converted we have set the fra we have converted our database to archive log mode we have taken the full backup and we have also created a guaranteed flashback restore point now it's time to run the pre-upgrade script now this is an important part this particular script actually tech tells us whether our database is ready for upgrade and if it is not ready what are the steps or what are the things that we need to take care of your upgrade so now remember that pre-upgrade this particular pre-upgrade we need to run from the oracle 19c home not from the oracle and also in the oracle 19c that will be this is a pre-shipped it will be part of your installation so it will be it's not something that you have to download if you if if you have the oracle support account then you can always download the latest pre upgrade.jar and unzip it so you can use the latest one you can download it from the oracle website but if you do not have the oracle support account then oracle, this particular pre upgrade is what we are going to see so use this particular pre upgrade.jar and the java so remember that the environmental variable that we need to set we need to set the oracle 19c 12c environmental variable so we should be in the so the environmental variable should be the 12c so if i say eco dollar oracle home if i show you this then i am on my oracle home is v12 database oracle base is v12 database but the pre-upgrade utility that we are going to run the we are going to run it from the v19 so we are going to run it from the 19c home so the pre-upgrade is present in rdbms admin and the java we need to it's a java pre-upgrade so we need to specify the java file location which is also present in jdk bin java so let's take that particular command so we are now going to run this there are two ways we can do we can first what it does is like we can specify file dir directory file directory and we can specify where the output of this particular file uh, pre-upgrade goes or we can say give the output on terminal text so we can use terminal text so that we can see the output on the screen or we can actually we can actually uh, create a directory so let me create a directory a pre-upgrade directory so let's do that now that particular directory will be empty so clear the screen make directory let's go to that particular directory and what ls pwd so this is the directory that i did clear the screen and this particular directory is completely empty now what we are going to do is we are going to run this we are going to run this pre-upgrade so let me take this full command and i'm going to paste it and what i'm saying is let me explain this command once again so run a J jre pre-upgrade dot uh pre-upgrade dot jar file there and specify the location the output location 
to this particular location which is this directory which is currently empty so it's going to create a pre-upgrade post upgrade sql and it's also going to create a pre-upgrade check log so i have ran the command and give it a minute it's and you can see the command is successful and it says before the upgrade run the pre pre upgrade fix up after the upgrade run the post upgrade fix up so it tells us to run uh, and it also tells us where is the pre upgrade log so this is the pre upgrade log keep a note of this directory and keep and what we what i'm going to do is i'm going to also clear so let me let me uh, here if you see that is a pre upgrade log that it was asking us to check so i'm going to check that particular pre upgrade log and let's see what exactly it tells us so now it's uh, it's it this particular component so we are upgrading a test database from 12.2 so no patches applied so i have not applied any patches but again i have mentioned that if you have patches go ahead and apply so from the the compatibility parameter is 12.2 so from 12.2 we are going to upgrade this particular database to 19.0 it's it's hosted on linux 64 bits uh and the database is archive log mode it's an enterprise edition these are the components that will be upgraded and before upgrade it tells us you know the size of this particular table spaces is slightly small size of this particular table spaces is slightly small so we need to mean we need to increase it so 470 it says you know minimum 500 810 980 32 150 and 72 439 so it's asking us to increase the size of this particular table spaces and then you know it also after the upgrade it says we we need to change the time zone from 26 to 32 so remember this after the upgrade we need to change the time zone from 26 and this is after the upgrade so it tells us to perform some of the actions and to run the pre-upgrade it we need to run the pre-upgrade fix up so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to i'm going to uh i'm going to act I'm going to exit i'm going to resize those particular uh sorry what am i saying so i'm going to uh, resize as per the recommendation i'm going to resize those uh table spaces so let me run sql plus as sysdba and resize those data files so i've done all of those i've resized all of those data files as per the recommendation now i'm going to clear and I'm now i'm going to run the same pre-upgrade.jar but this time i'm not going to say file direct directory what i'm going to say is terminal text i'm going to see what it and it's going to instead of creating the directories it's going to tell us and it's, it says and you can see now that required actions is none before upgrade required actions are none so we have we have successfully taken care of that and looks like all is good now if you still want to run the pre-upgrade fix up dot skip script you can still run it it might it, there might be some actions that it is doing ma manually less such as taking the update stats etc and you can see that right now i've run the pre-upgrade fix up i've ran the pre-upgrade fix up and the only this is informational only this is for the recovery rcat the recovery catalog if you are using the rman recovery catalog you might have uh, additional action i'm not using the recovery rman recovery catalog so i'm not i'm not going to perform so looks all good so we are at the step so let's let me explain what i have done at this moment so i ran a pre-upgrade script that particular pre-upgrade script gave us some actions so i verified what is there in the pre-upgrade log i ran the pre-upgrade fix up i also modified these data files to match to what it was telling us so this is what it was telling us so i modified the data files to what it recommended so i and then i ver re-verified i ran the pre-upgrade script again and this time it says that i have no actions only the recovery catalog which i'm not using so i'm going to ignore that so all good now it's actual time to start your start your upgrade so what we need to do is we need to stop our database stop the listener oracle 12c we need to sh shut down the database and we need to copy the config files the password and parameter file from oracle 12c to 19c home we need to copy the networking files the sqlnet.ora listener.ora 
if you have used in the listener.ri if you have used the oracle home you need to change it to 19c if you are in the sql net you have got the allowed versions etc etc the password case sensitivity you might want to change it i have not done that and from the from the 19c home from the 19c home you need to start up your database in the upgrade mode this is very important so you need to what you need to do is you are going to shut down your database stop the listener shut down the database copy the password file parameter file copy the sql net listener file and then start the database in upgrade mode from the 19c home you have to start the database in upgrade mode so now let's go ahead and do that so let me as i mentioned the first thing is we need to stop the listener so i am in the i'm into the oracle 12c home you can see i'm into the oracle 12c home so i'm going to stop the listener first so lsnr ctl stop listener i'm stopping the listener then i'm that's done i'm going to connect to the database sql plus s is dba and i'm going to shut the database so shut immediate i'm going to shut my database so right now i'm shutting down my database so that's the second step the third step is copy the copy the p file the password file and the sp file from your oracle 12c home to oracle 19c home that's the third step then copy so the database is shut down clear let me go to the let me go to the look oracle home slash dbs this is the location where the the sp file and the password file is stored you need to copy the the sp file so you need to copy this to let me put the pwd to get the so i'm going to copy this so copy the sp file to the dbs location but this time i'm copying it to the 19 so that's done copy the password file to the same oracle 19c that's done so now if i go to that particular location ls minus l you can see the aura password file and sp file that we copied now we also need to copy we need also need to copy the network the sql net dot aura and the listener dot aura to the new home so we need to copy that that those files are present in network admin so what i'm going to do is you can see we got so i have not configured the sql net so i'm not going to copy that so i i i do not have that particular file tennis names dot aura i do not need it so i'm going to just copy the listener name dot aura i'm going to copy it to 19c home so that's done if you config if you have configured the sql net dot aura then copy it i have i do, have not configured it so there is no point of copying a file the file does not exist so now that everything is ready we we shut down the database we stop the listener we copied the file it's time to actually initiate the upgrade now as i mentioned as i mentioned the perform the upgrade you have two options you can use the pearl utility the pearl utility is present in oracle home uh, rdbms admin so this is where the pearl utility is present and what we are going to do is we are going to run the we are going to run the sorry uh, let me let me put it this way so catctlpl is the utility which will be present in oracle home rdbms admin we have to use the bin pearl to run so we need to be so let me let me ex, let me go let me so that is another option also you can you can use the oracle home bin db upgrade so let me but before doing that we need to we need to be careful right now our environmental variable is set to 12c so you can see it's set to 12c so what we need to do is we need to set our environmental so variable oracle home to 19c home so i'm going to just take this particular location and the uh, i'm going to change this to 19 that's done i'm going to take this particular variable export oracle base i'm going to take this location change it to 19 verify that's done so now if i do echo oracle home you can see it is 19 and eco oracle base you can see it is 19 so i've changed now also we need to make sure that our 
Oracle SID is set to the database that we are going to upgrade. Our upgrade, the database that we are upgrading is test. So I've done that. Now, what there are two options. I can just run Oracle Home DB upgrade. So I can run this. This is one, or I can run the Perl. So this particular this particular package is present in Oracle Home. So let, if I go to this particular location, so let let me take this particular location. And if I show you that under this, you have this particular package LS minus L. And also there will be this particular package, if you can see. And what we are going to do is we are going to run a Perl program, which is present in bin, Perl bin, Oracle Home Perl bin. And we are going to call these two utilities. So let me explain what I have done. So first thing is I have set the Oracle SID to, so let me echo Oracle SID, which is the database that we are going to upgrade. The database home is set to 19. The database base is set to 19. The database is currently in the shutdown mode. It's in the shutdown mode. And for, before running the actual Perl upgrade, I forgot, I forgot. We need to start the database in startup mode. So let me connect to SQL plus SSDBA. And what we need to do is currently this particular database is in shutdown mode. We need to start this particular database in startup upgrade mode. So this is what we are going to do. So once the database is started in the upgrade mode, so let's give it a minute for the database to upgrade, start in the upgrade mode. Then what we are going to do is we are now going to run we are now going to run the Perl utility. We can also run the other. You can choose whatever you want. If you want bin upgrade, you can do this. Or if you want to do this, you can do this. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this. I'm already in that location, but still no harm. So I'm going to run this particular utility. And the upgrade has started. So right now you can see the upgrade has started. Now what I can do is uh, you can, you can, Take a look at this upgrade.log. So there will be there will be a lot of upgrade.logs and it has identified that it is doing the number of CPUs is two, database name is test, and final SQL process count is four. So it's going to upgrade the database. So what what you can you if you go to this particular location, if you go to this temp, where is it? So and the upgrade is going to take some time. So let me open one more session. And you should probably do this in no hub mode to avoid risking of your sessions not getting. So if I go to this particular location here under this, sorry, I'm, I, okay. So it has not at, it has, I believe it has not generated that. So give it a minute. So, right. Okay, so let me go to this location. And you can see it is the reason why we got four files zero, one, two, three, because it is initiated four count of four. So you can see it has initiated four count. So it's doing the upgrade in parallel. It's doing the upgrade in parallel. And what we can also do is while it's doing this, we can go to the Oracle 12C Diag info. So CD slash DBI slash keep a note of your trace file. Where is your trace file for the Oracle 12C? So I'm going to go to the location of this LS minus L. Go to the Diag location. Under this, you will find RDBMS. Under this, you will find test. Under this, you will find test. Under this, you will find trace. And under this, you will should be fine. You should be able to find the alert test.log, clear the screen, tail minus F. So I am under the trace location for 12C home. And if you do tail minus F, if you follow this, it will, it will, it's, you can see that, you know, it's, it's right now it's doing the upgrade. So in the background, it's doing the upgrade. Now, the upgrade is going to take time. So I'm going to pause the video. Remember what I said is probably you should start this particular upgrade command. 
the the upgrade that i ran the upgrade that i ran was pearl you can you could also use the db upgrade so i ran the pearl the remember that remember that when you run this particular command try to do it in no hub and you know without disconnecting ampersand mode so even if your session gets disconnected or you know then still the upgrade is running in the background i have not done that but in the production environment it's always better to do this in in a no hub and making sure ampersand is used at the background so let's let's wait let's wait for some time i'm going to pause this particular video and come back almost when this particular upgrade is about to be done as you can see the database is upgraded successfully upgrade summary is located here and what it does is like it shuts down the database at the end so we started the database in in the upgrade mode and once this particular command runs this particular command completes it actually stops the database so if i run ps minus ef grep pmon you should be able to see that there is no there is no uh, pmon process now what we need to do is we are now at the at the final steps we are going to modify our etc aura tabs to reflect that the oracle home for your new database or upgraded database is 19c so let me let me do that so i'm going to edit this particular file this is still pointing to 12c home i'm going to comment it out and i'm going to add another entry in this particular file which is for the 19c home so i'm going to add that that's done i'm going to save that clear verify that that's what i have done so tail etc or a tab and you can see the 12 home 12c home is commented out and 19c home is been added now let me set the environmental variable now if i now sh sh export echo if i do echo dollar oracle home you can see it is set to 19 and base is set to 19 so that's all good now if i go sql plus s is dba and if i say startup if the database comes up perfectly fine then probably things have gone good and upgrade has got successful so now the if i show you some things i'll show you show parameter compatible this particular parameter will be still be set to 12 so this particular parameter is set to 12.2 but if you see select version from v dollar instance if i look at the inst version from v dollar instance you can see the version is at 19 so our database is successful but the compatible parameter is set to 12.2 now we can change it now or we will we will change it at a later point in time so let's we have some more things to be done before we change that particular parameter so what we need to do is we need to upgrade the time zone to upgrade the time zone we are going to run we are going to first verify the time zone we need to upgrade from 26 to 32 so if the if the 20 the, there are some changes there, there are some changes that have happened across the world for and that there is a reason that we need to change this particular time zone from from 26 to 32 so we need to change it but before doing that we need to run some few scripts so what are the scripts is count stats so we need to run from rdbms admin count stats count star then check for the time zone upgrade and apply the time zone this particular script is not going to do anything it's going to verify if it is ready for the upgrade of the time zone so it, this is just a verification and this is going to actually make the changes now this remember what are these particular scripts so i'll give you so this particular script updates the optimizer actually shows the optimizer statistics for how many rows with with the timestamp with the time zone data and remember that there is a count star so if the stats are not updated then probably do not run this particular script because this particular script is going to take some time now also if you run this particular script you don't have to run this particular script so if you if you run this particular script then you need not run the count star so you don't have to run this but i just kept it so this is the main 
if you don't if you do not if you run this no need to run this this takes time so if you have not updated the optimizer statistics then probably skip this and go for this this is just a verification it doesn't do any changes it checks whether your system is ready for the upgrade and this is the one which is going to actually upgrade the time zone now remember one thing this particular script restarts your database two times without confirmation so without confirmation it will restart your database two times so now now that we have seen that currently we our version is at 26 let's go ahead and run this particular script one by one so i'm going to run the first script and that's done i'm going to run the second script and that's done i'm going to run the third script which is which is what which is the main one which is going to check if it needs an upgrade and newest are is determined see we are at 26 and we need to go to 32 so it has identified that there is a new time zone version so that is and the final script and this particular script is going to restart the database two times so i'm going to run the final script and this particular script is going to restart the database two times without confirmation so if you if you you, you can stop now but you can see the restarting the database in upgrade mode and it's going to restart this script will restart the database two times so it's going to it's going to take some time so i'm going to pause the video and come back and what i forgot to mention is when you are doing this upgrade do not try to do any insert or any data changes so make sure that there is nothing else running so when you do this time zone upgrade do not try to do any insert or anything like that so that's done and now i'm going to run the final script so let me clear the screen i'm going to run the final script we were on version 26 and now if i run what time zone version file that we are using you should be able to see we are at 32 so the time zone has also been done now we are going to verify if there are any post upgrade fix up that we need to do so we are going to run the post upgrade fix up to check if there are any post upgrade fix up that we need to run and it's it's going to check and it's going to it's going to again gather the stats and it's going to i do not know whether it validates the invalid objects but it's going to do some actions and you can see old time zone exists it is pre upgrade issue is remediated yes further db action no sim links none post dictionary none post fix objects informational only so looks like we have got everything in place now let's verify the dba registry component so let's verify the dba registry component to make sure that all the components have been upgraded and you can see the all the components are at 19 and they have been upgraded so they were at 12 and they were ready for upgrade waiting for the upgrade and now all of these components have been upgraded so that's all good now what we are going to do is we are at the point where we can drop the flashback uh, restore point so remember we took a restore point uh just uh, let me let me let me make this a little better so remember we took a restore point and what we are going to do is we are going to drop that particular restore point so let me clear the screen let me paste this and i'm going to select that particular restore point so let's see and this is the pre-upgrade restore point now that upgrade is completed we can say we can go ahead and drop that particular restore point that we created so let's run the drop restore point command so i'm going to take this command and i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste it and once those that restore point is dropped then we can see at this moment we have we we cannot go back but remember we still have the backup so if we want we can go back but we can't use the flashback to go back so that's done finally the compatible parameter as i mentioned the compatible parameter is set to uh 12 so that is currently 12 and since we have upgraded our database and if everything works fine then it's time to change this particular parameter to 19 remember we can't change it back again if if once it is upgraded you cannot go down so be careful and only when all the things are validated 
go ahead and change that particular parameter so let's do that and i'm going to uh, i'm i'm that particular parameter changes we need to change that in the scope is equal to sp file it is not a dynamic parameter i can't i can't change it in both that particular parameter needs a restart so i have stopped i've I've changed that particular parameter in SP file, then I'm stopping the database, shutting down the database, starting it again. And then once that is done, I will verify that that particular parameter is changed. So uh, it's, it's still not started. Give it a minute. Let me exit clear. Okay, so I guess I did not initiate the startup. So let's give it a minute and then I've said show parameter compatible. I've already pasted that particular command. So once and you can see the compatible parameter has been changed to 19. So at this moment, we are almost through. And what we need to do is we now need to, if there are any invalid objects, recompile those objects if there are any. So I'm going to just try to, I'm going to just do that one more time. It, it's not going to harm if there are, there are none, it's not going to do anything. So I'm going to Re recompile any invalid and i'm going to execute the dictionary stats once again so i'm going to do that once that is done so let me paste those two commands also so i pasted that and now what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to test that we are able to connect to this particular database from remote so that we remember we stopped the 12c listener so we are going to start the 19c listener so let me connect to this particular session set the environmental variable which is nothing but the 19c environment so aura env test lsnr ctl start listener you don't have to specify name and you can see it is starting from 19 home the listener has started and we are going to test the remote connectivity so as you can see the listener has successfully started i have launched the sql developer let me create a new connection, test database, users, I'm connecting as a sys, sys DBA. So I'm going to give sys password, save password so that I'm not getting prompted. The name of the machine, the remote machine, which is 192.168. You, you can give the host name or the IP address, the port 1521, the listener port. As you can see, our listener is running at port 1521 and I'm going to say the name SID, which is test same. And I'm going to do the test and, and that seems to have worked. So you can see the connection has been successful. If the connection is not successful, look at, look at the parameter, look at your local listener parameter. So look at your local listener It's not set. So since it is not set, if you do alter system register, then by default, it will get registered to 1521 because that's a default port. So set. If, if, if you are using a non-default port, then probably what you can do is like you can use alter system set local listener and you can say host the host name or the IP address and port whatever port you are using, you can set this particular parameter and you can use, you can connect to. So you, we have, we have tested that our, we are able to connect to our database from remote. So if I run select name comma open mode comma version version from from v dollar why am i why am i doing this v dollar database comma v dollar instance you should be able to see that our database test is in read write and it is at 19 so with this we have successfully upgraded our database from Oracle 12C to Oracle 19C. This particular tutorial, and let me repeat, this particular tutorial was done on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.8. You can see it has been done on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.8. I'm using Oracle VirtualBox. This particular and Oracle VirtualBox 7.6 is used for this particular tutorial we successfully upgraded a database we successfully upgraded oracle 12c to oracle 19c and in this particular tutorial we learned how to do the upgrade from 12c to 19c manually i'll 
I'll also cover how to do this particular upgrade using DBUA where life, our life becomes very easy because some of the steps that we mentioned here, we do not have to do them. When you are, we are using the DBUA, we don't have to do them. We can just do the upgrade. So our, our life becomes very easy if we are going to use the DBUA and I'll cover that particular tutorial, that particular video in some other or that particular tutorial in some other video. But these were the high level steps. We installed the Oracle 19C. We recompiled invalid objects. We gathered the dictionary sets. We purged recycle bin. We configured the FRA. We converted database to no archive log mode. We took our man full backup. We created a guaranteed flashback restore point. We ran pre-upgrade JavaScript. We, we checked pre-upgrade logs. We ran pre-upgrade fix-up script. We shut down the listener. We shut down the databases. We copied init file, password file, sqlnet.aura, in my case it was not there, and listener.aura file from Oracle 12C to Oracle 19C home. We started the database in upgrade mode. When we started the database in upgrade mode, we started it from Oracle 19C home. We did the upgrade using cat ctlpl. We, you could have also done the upgrade using the db upgrade. Once the upgrade is completed, we modified the etc or our tab to reflect that we are into the new home. We upgraded the time zone. We ran the post upgrade fix up script. We verified the DBA registry to check all the components are upgraded. We dropped the flash flashback restore point. We changed the compatible parameters to 19. And finally, we recompiled invalid objects, gathered the stats again, started the Oracle 19C listener, and we checked the remote connectivity. I hope this particular tutorial was useful. In this particular tutorial, we learned how to perform Oracle 12C to 19C upgrade manually. Thank you for watching. If you do like the channel, if you do like the content that I'm uploading, do subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.